Hi everyone, my name is Alison Tuckman from Fawcett Institute and I would love to take maybe the next few minutes to uh, quickly uh, walk you through a few security features that you may want to install uh, as you're trying to avoid uh, Zoom bombings or <laughs> rather than avoiding, make them less likely or less painful to deal with. Um, you know, what are Zoom bombings first of, first of all? I don't know. I think, you know, they are really going to become, I think, probably word of the year 2020, unfortunately, right? Uh, I think it's, you know, really quite saddening that as people rely more and more about uh, on the online world to connect rather in this really challenging time where it's already really hard to connect, uh, those things are becoming more and more prevalent. It's basically people that, uh, you know, are logging into uh, other people's, uh, other people's uh, Zoom meetings uh, and uh, cause havoc there via hate speech, via showing content that, uh, you know that, uh, that that goes from everything from really being illegal uh, to uh, to just being like really inappropriate jokes uh, and just generally I think harassing the uh, the meeting culture. Um, I think the New York Times just came out with a, a quite a crazy article about this. Uh, you know they're really happening all over the place, uh, both um, you know from school gatherings from universities, um, but also uh, you know uh, in, in church gatherings, uh, anonymous alcoholics, and so on and so forth. So I think. Um, you know, they are definitely become uh, become more and more prevalent as people kind of like untap the virtual more and more. Um, and, you know, I think they're, they're not going to go away anytime soon. They're here to stay. So I think it's uh, it's kind of like uh, imprudent to at least uh, think about uh, how can how can you make them uh, how can you make them less likely and less painful. And, you know, one thing that I want to say is that, you know, it's all about trade-offs, right? It's definitely possible to do a meeting that is uh, super secure in which, you know, the risk uh, that you're being bombed is very, very low. Uh, you know, that would be a meeting where, you know, people are verified uh, beforehand, you know, that, you know, who's joining. It's, uh, it's also password protected. Even within the meeting, you could disallow people from, uh, from uh, sharing their, uh, from sharing a video. You could disallow a chat, um, you know, and, 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 and have the whole meeting be password protected. Um, but I do want to say that with every kind of like restriction um, that, that you impose on a meeting, you do end up losing a lot of people. Uh, a, because you're making the, the meeting much, much less uh, kind of like, uh, much less engaging, uh, but also B, by making it much harder to join, um, you know, you may lose those people that, you know, want to and, and, and are seeking to connect the most right now. One thing that was really amazing about the Foresight community is that, you know, our meetings used to be quite restrictive in the sense that they often used to be in San Francisco or the Bay Area, right? So we couldn't really, uh, we couldn't really tap into this really global community. And then, um, you know, last year, really, a lot of people were very interested in having much more global meetings and setting up different Foresight instances across the world. So, you know, when as the pandemic hit and we were expanding globally, it was for the first time it kind of seemed possible uh, to uh, unlock a much uh, larger, uh, larger fraction of the population that you know uh, will be interested in, in, in joining the discussion uh, and make those meetings much more accessible. A because uh, you know you can make them much cheaper. Like our meetings are virtually free and are donation based. Um, then B, you know, people don't have to leave their house. People don't have to go anywhere to access them. That helps people that are from different age brackets. And I'm very, very happy that we've expanded uh, to have a, a really great age variety right now. But it also helps people uh, who are now joining on a daily basis, you know, from, uh, from Africa to Asia to really all over the world. So I'm really, really, really happy. And most of the most valuable contributions in those meetings come from, uh, from people that we could not have otherwise reached. Uh, you know, meanwhile, I'm also very uh, cautious that whenever you do uh, kind of restrict the meetings, you are losing a lot of people. Um, you know, not making this up, but, you know, we, we have uh, experimented with a little bit before. And, you know, you can lose up to, uh, up, to half, up to half of the participants by making it a little harder to join. Um, you know, I think many people are just getting ramped up in, in, how, uh, in, in kind of like using the online containers, I think, by making it hard for those people to join you're kind of uh, really restricting, restricting, restricting the experience. And, you know, for every container, there's a different, uh, a different set of rules that you may want to consider. Some people, you know, want to have a super open one, some have a super closed one. Uh, I'm definitely uh, navigating that space and try to do something in the middle that is accessible uh, to all um, and that is also engaging enough that it's even useful to do those meetings while still, you know, definitely minimizing the risk of Zoom bombings. So here are um, a few uh, kind of like ways in which uh, I've been uh, I've, I've been kind of like uh, going about this lately. You know, like like uh, like unfortunately, like many others, we have had uh, Zoom bombings. Uh, unlike others, I think 
um, or unlike at least a few others, I'm really, really fortunate to be surrounded by a great community that um, has kind of like stepped up its game and uh, has gotten together and has shared best practices, which I'm hoping to share with you now. I wish you could do something like screen share that would allow me to show the video. I don't think that's currently possible. At least I couldn't figure it out. If you find out how, please let me know. But for now, I think I'm going to tell you about it and try to explain to you a little bit where you can find those features. Um, okay, so first and foremost, what you want to do is you want to upgrade uh, your Zoom to Zoom 5.0. Uh, like that, you already have like better security features available. Maybe at the time that you're listening to this, um, you uh, Zoom 5.0 will have been redundant, and there's a Zoom 6.0. And that, <laughs> if that's the case, please update to that. Um, and, or maybe a 7.0. Who knows? They're definitely trying to get better at security too. It must be crazy uh, on that end as well. Um, but once you've updated to that, and um, maybe we can start talking about, you know, how do you want to invite participants? And there's like. A, a ton of different ways on how to do this. I think one thing that you are, could be using is, you know, you send out um, the link uh, to the Zoom uh, at the day of, um, and I have a password protected and have the password not directly attached, uh, directly attached to the link, but have it somewhere somewhere else so that automatically it can't be passed very easily, right? And again, if you're doing a, an, an event that definitely needs protection and needs registration, you should. You should uh, do it differently. But if you want to have an event that's kind of like a public open container, uh, you know, uh, that where, but where you know the participants, this could be a way to go. Uh, you could also, uh, you know, require entry uh, upon, you, you could require reg registration upon entry. Um, and that's both of those are features that you can be, uh, that you can decide on as you're setting up uh, the meeting that you're trying to host. Right, and, and make sure that if you suddenly password protect your meeting, you tell your participants. Uh, because I think uh, I heard that Zoom suddenly upgraded to password protection, and then a lot of people were locked out of meetings <laughs> that uh, that they currently that they previously could access with without a password. Suddenly they had to have one, and 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 and, and it made a lot of meetings not happen. So definitely let let your participants know beforehand, tell them how to do that, and how to sign up. Then uh, once participants do enter a meeting. First thing you want to do is you want to mute everyone. Um, and uh, you can set that beforehand, but you know you can also definitely set it during the meeting. Uh, the way to do that is you go on your uh, on your host bar, you click on participants, uh, in the participants, there's down in the toggle, if there's a, a thing that says mute all, you want to mute all. Next thing you want to do is you want to click on the little icon that says more on the participant, uh, on the little participant pop-up, and on more, you want to disallow people from unmuting themselves like that. They can't, uh, you know, scream uh, kind of like offensive hate speech, uh, hate, hate, hate speech comments in your meeting as you're hosting them. Uh, you also uh, want to disallow people from renaming themselves uh, like that. Uh, you avoid that when someone enters, they see someone else and they can take on their name and their ally, uh, allies and impersonate them. You know, one residual risk, of course, they could still be logging in under a wrong name. Uh, and, you know, that's definitely a risk that still remains. You, there's different ways around that, um, but that would require uh, a much kind of like stricter sign-up process, which I'm not going to go into, but you're very welcome to research. Um, okay, once you've done that, um, uh, th th that should be really the first things that you should be doing. Um, you know, next one, <laughs> next one up, you should be going on to share screen. There's a little uh, arrow next to share screen. On share screen, you should go on advanced sharing options. Advanced sharing options allows you to say that only one participant can share the screen at a time and who can share only the host should be able to share. Um, otherwise, you know, people can screen share offensive content um, that they're watching while they're watching the video as well, which you want to avoid. Um, next one up, another thing uh, that you want to be doing is you want to assign co-hosts. So if you have a speaker uh, that you're interviewing or something, make sure that they are co-hosts. Like that they are still allowed to share screens and they are allowed to unmute themselves. Otherwise, you always have to manually mute and unmute people, uh, which is a kind of like a quite a tedious effort. Um, you know, another thing that you should be doing is you should spotlight the speaker video for everyone. Um, you know, once you have the, uh, the little video of the speakers, there's a, uh, like a little icon in the top that allows you to spotlight the video for everyone. Like that, you avoid that, you know, when people are showing uh, offensive video content as their own video, that uh, it reaches uh, everyone in the way. So people can basically decide if they are only on speaker view, they will only always see that speaker as spotlighted for them. There is, um, you know, of course, still a residual risk. Um, and, you know, for that, 
And I do want to say that, you know, as I said before, you can definitely disallow all participants from, sh uh, from even showing their video. But I personally find it, you know, to be one of the most valuable things to be able to see other participants in the gallery view uh, and to see that other participants are there with me um, and, you know, they're commenting with each other. You can see they're kind of like, uh, they're connecting on a different level and it's really nice to have a face, uh, to have a face attached to the person that you're communicating with. So I'm uh, not going to disallow the video. I think it's, uh, it's really quite fantastic. But if you want to avoid that, you know, suddenly someone can like loop in another video and share offensive content, you can yourself go from gallery view into speaker view and you will only ever see the speaker who will be spotlighted there for you. Um, and, you know, definitely there's the residual risk that you can see Zoom members if you don't do that. Uh, you know, in the gallery view, and there's an additional residual risk uh, that, uh, you know, I, I think we will be uh, we will be tolerating moving forward is that people can post offensive content in the chat, which has happened very, very often <laughs> in a lot of different meetings. Um, and, you know, once, once they are posting in the chat, um, you know, this is a way where you can easily identify them because their name is attached. At that point, then they cannot rename themselves anymore. So you can then go on participants find them and eject them. And for that, here is kind of like the magic trick for all of this. Uh, ideally, you're not doing this alone. Ideally, you have someone with you um, who's co-hosting the meeting with you. If you're facilitating or if you're moderating, uh, you know, you have your eyes on the ball on the speaker, so you can't always, uh, you can't always monitor all the other ongoing bits and pieces. So if you have someone else that could be monitoring both the videos in gallery view to always see whether someone is showing offensive content, and who's monitoring the chat and who's trying to see if someone is uh, posting offensive content there, uh, then uh, you know you should uh, take that person, you should make them co-host right away so they can find the person immediately and eject them. Uh, you should also not allow people from allowing to enter again once they have been ejected. This is a feature that you can install as you're setting up the meeting. Um, there is another feature called Lock the Meeting, which you may want to or not want to install. Uh, it prevents people from coming in late after you have locked the meeting. It is, again, on the More tabs and participants. Um, you know, the big disadvantage is that often people uh, in different time zones, uh, especially for our meetings, come a little late. Um, and so by, uh, allow, by disallowing people from entering late, um, you're definitely locking a few late comments out. But maybe that's what you want to do to entice people to be on time as well. I don't know. Um, all right, great. So, you know, I think really as a kind of wrap up, um, the residual risk remains that people can show offensive content in their videos, in gallery view, and uh, in the chat. Uh, I think those are like the two most pressing ones. Um, you know, and really, I think the most important thing to, to get right is when, when it happens, try to eject them very quickly. Uh, you know, like kind of like a, a massive thing that you consider is also if, if content that is incredibly, uh, you know, offensive uh, um, is out there to you, um, you could just pull the plug and end the meeting for all as a host, you know, then everyone would get kicked off. But this can also be really traumatizing for people, uh, you know, who have, uh, uh, if they're just being, uh, being ejected from a Zoom meeting. So it's, it's really hard to gauge. I think, you know, like check in with your community, um, check in with others, uh, you know, just kind of like, try to help each other out when, when those things happen. As a host, you can also, at the beginning of the meeting, you know, show your participants that if they see anything, they should maybe contact your co-host right away. Um, you know, if they get a private message uh, in the chat of some, something that they find offensive, they should contact the, the, the co-host right away so that, you know, participants feel empowered to speak up uh, when something happens. Um, all right. Uh, I think, yeah, one last thing that uh, I want to get to um, is that, you know, I've touched on it at the beginning a little bit. I think Zoom is uh, kind of realizing, oh, my God, what the hell is going on right now with all the Zoom bombings happening? Uh, I think, you know, the police is really trying to ramp up their game. Uh, in, um, but um, what Zoom is trying to do is uh, it has recently acquired Keybase. Keybase is, uh, I think, like quite an interesting platform. Uh, which uh, is kind of like a mix, I would say, between uh, maybe Slack, um, and, and, and like a very, very secure Slack uh, and to speak in like a workspace. Uh, but it, uh, you can also already now, I think, launch Zoom from within a chat on Keybase in an end-to-end -end encrypted way. Um, what Keybase allows you to do is basically create a profile and link to other profiles, like your LinkedIn and so on, so that uh, other people can verify who you are. Um, and you can even, you know, like show your friends so that you can have like a peer verification mechanism going on. Your messages on Keybase are end-to-end -end encrypted. And so it's a good place to start, I think. 
Um, and uh, we are going forward now exper be experimenting with Keybase a little bit more. That being said, again, by switching platforms, you will definitely be, be losing people. So, you know, maybe you want to test different uh, platforms in parallel out. Um, but I think one maybe potential argument for using Keybase, and I'm not sure if we will uh, um, as our main coordination device in the future, but it's just something that we're experimenting with. One argument uh, for it is that now, given that uh, Zoom has acquired Keybase, uh, maybe um, either they're going to make it a much much easier to uh, kind of to wrap your head around uh, or integrate a few features already into Zoom, or uh, b uh, they may require you to uh, to sign into a Keybase like account in the future moving forward. Um, so uh, maybe that's something that you want to consider anyways. I think one of the things in which we have to learn to show up for each other much more um, is definitely, uh, you know, those are really unprecedented times for many of us, even if you can't uh, see it, even if you're fortunate enough that, uh, you know, you're in a community, those, a lot of people are definitely uh, struggling. Those are new times and those are times in which, um, you know, a lot of people have been put in a very, very new situations so that are really, really hard. And I think what better time to break uh, social conventions that would usually stop you from reaching out to those people uh, to make extra sure that uh, that, you, that they're safe and supported. You know, this is definitely to community hosts, but this is also to every every of the participants. And I've seen this um, been done really, really in a very, very touching way in this community already. Um, so I encourage you all to kind of like um, be proactive in that. Uh, also, if, you know, if you feel like you're struggling, if you feel either whether that's after Zoom bombing or whether that's just generally there's a ton of resources available online, uh, you know, reach out to people uh, and, and try to make sure that uh, that we use those kind of like uh, very, very unprecedented times in ways that um, that we can all uh, emerge stronger out of this uh, afterwards and in, in also the ways in which we can break a few of those conventions that usually stop us uh, from giving that extra care uh, because it feels awkward. Now it doesn't feel awkward. Now you have a really good excuse uh, to be doing those things. So this is just an encouragement to uh, kind of like, you know, um, have some a little bit of humanity in those times, even if it's really, really hard and even if, uh, if many people are struggling. You know, if you have any questions, if you like, uh, you know, if you're seeking kind of like a personal advice, feel free to reach out to me and I'll, if, if, if I have time, I'll try to walk you through it. Uh, I do think that we should get better at this. I think uh, uh, it's 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 providing too much value for too many people um, to not make this uh, a safe and fun container for everyone. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope it was a little bit useful to many of you. Um, it's really hard to do this without screen share, but uh, I'm hoping that you know we can grow a really strong and rich virtual community all moving forward.